Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, as I said before, for the newcomers, uh, this is um, a workshop. So you are supposed to use your laptop and solve some ex ex exercise that I'm going to propose. Um, it's longer, so it, it will end at uh, 12 and uh, part, uh, quarter past 12. Um, if you have any question, uh, please you can interrupt me and, and we can try to solve it. Okay? So welcome. Um, this this workshop is about uh, BHAT and Drupal for acceptance tests. My name is Ricardo Sanz. I'm a Drupal developer and DevOps. Um, personally, I, I like I really like free software and weird music. If you want to talk about weird music, uh, I'm your man, so you can uh, ask me. And uh, you can find me on Drupal Org as Tunic. And I'm one of the founders of Metadrop, a company based in Spain uh, that uh, we only do um, Drupal. And we love to solve complex problems. And that's why we need a lot of testing to be sure that everything is always working properly. Let's see the walkthrough of this, of this session. Uh, the first thing is the workshop requisites that you need on your laptop to, to do the er exercises. Then we will see a very fast BHAT introduction. Um, does anybody know, uh, have used BHAT or knows about BHAT? Or? Okay. And then we will do the er exercises. So the requisites, uh, you will need Git. Uh, composer, um, probably make the, um, to do some comments, Docker and Docker Compose. Docker Compose uh, released the V2 recently. I'm sorry, but the tool I'm using is not compatible with uh, Docker Compose V2, so you will need the, the old Docker Compose plugin. And this is the thing that you, you need to, to run. So the, you need to clone this repository because here we have a Drupal environment ready to be used with BHAT. So you have to clone this repository, run Composer install, and then run this, this assistant, that's Composer boilerplate assistant, and answer some question that the, the assistant asks you. Just to, what we are going to do is to install the Umami profile you know, the, the demo Drupal profile, because we are going to do the test on that profile. Uh, it's, as, uh, anybody has any problem to see the, the URL? I'm sorry, I, I, it, it says Drupal Camp Spain, but because we did, uh, I did this uh, workshop in, in Drupal Camp Spain, but it's correct, okay? I'm sorry, it's a little bit long. Um, I think it's good to do this now because you have to download some containers and, and you may need some time. So while we, uh, well, I introduced to BHAT, it's nice that the computer is, you know, uh, downloading things and doing everything under, under the hood. Uh, by the way, um, I'm sorry, but this tool is uh, tested on Linux. I'm not totally sure it's going to work on on Mac or Windows. So you may have some problems. If it's not working, um, you can solve the ex exercise with me. 
uh, with the people that don't have any laptop. Does anybody need more time to clone the repository and, and run the commands? Uh, so I wait a little bit. Okay. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to continue, okay? Okay, let's go with the BHAT introduction. BHAT is a BDD framework, that means uh, behavior driven development. It's what you do is describing a behavior that it's uh, automatically tested. Uh, you do what, what you do when you describe this, you are writing acceptance tests using natural language. This uh, it's great because it, it allows you to kill the ambiguity because you have to write all the steps that the user should do um, to achieve a functionality. Um, so what does the script describe mean? It means that you are using user stories um, anybody knows what is a user story? What, what is? More or less, you, will, you may know. Uh, at the end, you are uh, describing a functionality from the user's perspective. And this is written using the Gherkin language. As I said before, it's using natural language. We will see an example. Um, here is a, a user story using the, the Gherkin language. As you can see, we have a title. Then we have a short description of the user story. In this case, we are, uh, this is a user story to uh, allow a user to search the site. And after the, below the description, we have two different scenarios where we uh, describe different ways of doing the functionality. Uh, in this case, the first is just a, um, um, regular standard search the user the anonymous user goes to the um, to the home page then in one field search I mean in uh, types a, a string and then just click the search button and as you see the test says that uh, there is a, a string that should be displayed in this case the example article uh, well, is a, there is a typo I'm sorry and the second scenario is, an, let's say, an error where the user tries to search, but there is no, no, no search terms uh, typed. So the user should see a, an error saying that you need to, that the user needs to write something. So this is a, a user story with two scenarios. And as you see, each scenario has steps. 
The Gherkin language is what you have seen. It's, uh, it's used to write the user stories. It's uh, organized using feature files. Each uh, feature is inside a one single file with uh, multiple scenarios if you need it. Each feature is a functionality. And as I said, the, the functionalities are described or tested using scenarios because uh, you remember that you write in natural language, but this is translated into, um, into actions, I mean, into, into real testing. Uh, each scenario is composed by, by steps, and there is the first word, as you can see, given, when, and, and then. It's not uh, important for the, for the test, okay? Uh, they are only there to, be, to, to make the test more readable, because one of the most important things is that this should be readable, but uh, non-technical users, okay? Um, what does automatically tested mean? It means that each step is, is technically is mapped to actions. Each actions are PHP functions. And that means that, uh, well, each function can do many things, but usually they use a driver, a BHAT driver, that uh, give access uh, BHAT to the Drupal. And for example, the good uh, driver, what it does is to request some um, URL and checks the the response, or you can use Selenium 2. In this case, you have a full uh, couple browser that um, requests pages to the to the site, and then can test uh, anything on the on the on the response. But in this case, for uh, Selenium 2 has support for JavaScript, so you can test uh, things related to JavaScript or things. And also, you have, for example, the Drupal API that allows you to run functions inside the bootstrap uh, Drupal. So it's very handy to, for example, create content or to do other checks that are not uh, easy to do using the, um, the Drupal interface. There are, um, there is the, the Behat extension. This uh, module is a Drupal module that extends the, the Behat and provides uh, steps to use with Drupal. For example, accessing the site uh, as a user or a user with a role, etc., or creation of content, status message detection, etc. We will see um, examples during the exercise. Okay, so um, just uh, later it will be clear. Also, the Behat extension provides support for Drupal concepts like region detection on the on the theme, or to detect if the if the user is logged in or not. And also you have the BHAT context. Uh, BHAT contents are the standard way to extend BHAT. The typical use is, is uh, adding new steps, uh, like for example, uh, um, steps related to Drupal messages or the batch API or for the boom purpose, purpose or something related to forms. At the end, because you want to have the, um, the tests to be readable by any technical user, uh, you um, many times need that a step that it's clear in the sense of uh, someone that it's not a Drupal developer can understand it, um, but under the hood it uh, does something related to Drupal, like doing, I don't know, something complex. And that's the introduction to BHAT. Uh, it's, as you see, it's very fast, okay? BHAT, I mean, has many things to offer. But the, the idea is to learn BHAT or at least to get familiar with BHAT with the exercises that we are going to, to do now. Um, anyway, anybody has any question or something? Yeah? Uh, sorry, uh, we need to... Uh, yeah. There is... Yeah, to talk to you. Do you mind coming in? Just make sure it's recorded. So, uh, does any of those extensions generate the PHP functions or have them out of the box or do you always write them yourself? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, when you write uh, a step, for example, if you go here, we have different steps. 
those steps are uh, already in B hat, but if I write a step that it's not in B hat, B hat will detect that uh, it doesn't know that step and it can create a, like a boilerplate code for the function you to write it. So um, you don't need to, because I mean the, the syntax can be not clear at, at the beginning, I mean to, to relate one step to the function that executes, executes that test. Inside the function, you have to write the, the actions that we had should take. This can be tricky sometimes, of course, but the good thing is that there is a lot of code using BHAT, so there are a lot of examples. And uh, there are also a lot of, um, of context available that uh, make very easy to, well, to, to make the test or even to check uh, how some steps are done. It's, it's okay? Okay. Any other question? Okay, so let's go with the hard part, the ex exercises. So let's go with the initial setup again to make sure that everyone is, uh, has the, their environment running. Then we will check, we receive a new project. Then we will uh, write, write acceptance tests. So let's go. Bhat sometimes can be a little bit hard to set up, so we are going to use uh, Metadrops boilerplate. That it's um, it's a tool that provides you uh, containers. It's based on Goodby. It has a PHP, Apache, Selenium, anything needed to to work with uh, Drupal and also with Bhat because it's pre-configured. So. The same slide as before, you should clone the repository, run Composer install, and when it's done, you should uh, run the assistant. And when it asks questions, you should go with the default, but you have to select to install the Umami pro profile. And, and at the end, it, it asks about creating a sub theme, it's not necessary. Okay? So it's okay for everyone? Uh, once you have your, your the, um, the site downloaded and, and the system run, you can use these commands to, um, to control the, the containers. So, for example, I'm going to show you, this is my environment. So, it's okay, you can read it, right? So, uh, for example, if I if I check the um, this is the URL, so I can go to that URL. Oops. It's well, it's this one, but if I load again, oops. <coughs> Ah, yeah, the port is not correct. Okay. So here I have my containers and I can do, for example, uh, well, I have, I, I can bring them up. If you have run the Drupal Assistant, you should have the, the containers um, up and running. And you can both well, stop and remove completely and also you can run make shell if you oh, sorry if you run make shell you will be inside the container okay and here we can run uh, bhat commands that it's uh, they are simple you have just bhat to run the the all the tests you can run bhat DL to get all the available steps and you can run only some some tests that are tagged with a certain tag we will see there later so for example if I go here and I run bhat it should start doing the tests okay 
Um, something important is that this is the repository you have cloned. As you see, there are mm, many different tags. Now you are probably in the dev branch on the top. Um, uh, well, it's an initial commit because it's, a, it's an error, sorry. Uh, but as you see, the, the, the last one, the, all, almost the last one, the solutions is where you have all the solutions. So you have, you have to check out the user story one exercise tag. So you start in the first exercise, okay? Uh, if not, you're going to, uh, well, you, you will be able to see the solution and it's the idea is that you try to solve by yourself, okay? So, we are in, 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 the, in the repository, we check out the first, uh, the first tag, I mean the first uh, exercise. Okay. And then, let's see. Well, first we receive a new project and I don't know in your case, but sometimes you receive information like this, like we have a project for a recipe website where users can see what recipes are available and search for them. We will need to categorize them in some way. We tag something similar. It should also have another content, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of information, not really structured and, and with no, not totally clear requisites. This obviously is a problem because when you have to develop a site, you need a clear requisites and, and, and everything should be uh, clear for you and for the, the person that wants the site. So you need to write the specifications. Okay, in this case, we, as you may have supposed, this is the Umami uh, site, that it's a recipe site with different recipes. Uh, so we will have recipes and articles, we have lists of recipes and articles by date, we will have uh, search functionality, editorial workflow, uh, related articles in, on each article page, home page with a bit of everything. So these specifications obviously are better than the previous one, but it's not totally clear. So what we have to do is starting writing acceptance tests and the name is because you agree with the client uh, on the test. So um, the idea is that when all the acceptance tests are green, are running okay, the site is, can be uh, considered done. The, 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 the good thing is because the tests are written in natural language, you can talk with your client uh, directly on the test. Even there are some clients that can, that, that can write their own test. That's something that's not very common, but I, I, I have seen it and it's, it's great because they are forced to decide how the site will work. Because I mean, the, they, you, you can't be ambiguous with the, this kind of tests. So it's, it's like a, a double win because you have the automated test, but also you kill the ambiguity and have uh, clear requisites. So let's start reading, writing acceptance tests. So to write a test, you have to add a dot feature file word in a folder called tests functional bihat features umami. Okay, uh, you can go to that uh, folder. In my case, if I go there, tests, functional, bihat, features, and umami. Okay, so here I only have one file now. That's, that will be my first test. Okay, so if we continue, we go to the first user story. That's a very simple user story. That is, uh, that the user should be able to view a list of recipes. Um, for this, I suggest uh, these steps. There are given I'm anonymous user. Then there is another step that it's given I go to a certain path. 
and I click a text to click, okay? Um, because the idea is be because um, the, um, the test should be readable by any people. You don't use, like, for example, CSS selector or something like that, but you use real text that you can see on the website. And then you have uh, a step to check the result. So you can, you can use then the, the, the I should see and cert a certain text. The, there is a file called recipe list feature that if we, if we check it, as you see, it's just the beginning of the test. You only have the feature described, but there is no, there is no, there are no steps. Now you should start reading your first uh, test and I'm going to uh, remember, I mean, remember or remind you how you should do it. This is an example. Uh, here is an example. So you start, you have, we have the four first lines and then you should start writing, writing a scenario and a name of the scenario and then the steps. Um, what you should do is just take this file and edit it. It's, um, it's clear. Do you need more information? Do you want to try or do you, do you just want to see the first uh, solution? Anyone wants to do the exercise? So I give you some time. Um, Anybody has any problem running, running the, the environment or? The setup? Okay, let's try to solve this exercise. So the first thing that we should do is, let's see what we have to do. Um, sorry. Let's back to the first uh, exercise. So what we have to check is that uh, there is a, a, a list of recipes. If we check the, if we check the site, uh, sorry, yes. this is the, the site that we want to test, the Umami profile. We can see that the recipes are here. If, oops. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't bring up my, my site. I think
Okay, here it is. So this is the umami profile. If we go to recipes, we see that there is a list of recipes, okay? So let's see the, how to solve this first uh, exercise. Oops. Let's go to the U US one solution, okay? And if we check the, the file, now we have an, a new file that it's called recipe list feature solution. It's a different one because uh, I didn't want to overwrite your work uh, when we ch change uh, tags. And if we check it, This is the test. As you see, it's very simple. We first um, create a, a declare an scenario with the the first uh, lines. I mean, the content recipe and US one is just the tags, so you can reference the test when you want to run, for example, only the test related to content. And then we have the the steps. What we are doing is first declaring that we are the anonymous user. Then we go to the home page. Then we click recipes. As you see, if I'm the anonymous user, I go to the home page and then I click on recipes like a normal user. And well, this is not the home page, sorry. I go to the home page and then I click on recipes and I see the recipes. And then how we check that we are in this page? We use the steps, then I should see, and different texts, okay? In this case, it's important to note that uh, when you do the real tests, you are not going to use the, you shouldn't use the, um, the real content of the site because the real content of the site is going to change very often. So you should use uh, pre-created content or something like that, but this is not the, the scope of, of this talk. I only want to introduce you to Bihat. Okay, so uh, if you really, I mean, if you are using tests on your site, don't do, don't, do, do, don't test the site with the, the real content. Um, so, yeah, as you see, the, the, the test is, I think it's very simple. Um, any question on this test? Nothing? Okay, then let's go to the second exercise. Let's see the user story too. Uh, we want to access the, the feature recipe on the home page. If you check this, if you go to the site, there is a, a big uh, hero content with a feature recipe. We want to be sure that that uh, content is always on the home page. How we can do that? Uh, well, um, it's very similar to the other to the other um, test. The suggested suggested steps are the same. Anonymous. I am the anonymous user. I go to some path. Um, I click something, and then I should see uh, a certain text. Um, you can do the exercise using the the next tag. This will be. You, oh. the, this one, use two dash exercise. If you go here and you list the, the, the files, you have a new file that is the feature recipe feature that if you read it, you have the same as before, the initial lines of the test, but you should uh, complete the rest of the test. Um, does anybody want to do the, the, the exercise? Can I give you some time? Or <laughs> a 
still? I still downloading. Yeah, I, that, that's why I, I wanted you to download on the beginning because maybe it's uh, a long thing. Um, by the way, let's let's before continue. I'm going to uh, show you how the um, the tests are run. Okay. So, for example, if I this file that it's for the uh, it's the the first test, I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to use the feature extension because that's the way um, Bihat detects the tests. Oops. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I have that uh, my test is ready to be run. I'm going to remove. No, I think it's okay. If I run Bihat. Oh, sorry, I have to do inside the container. I forgot. Okay. Now, if I run Bihat inside my container, it's running the test. Okay, so as you see, There are, well, th those are some uh, basic tests that are uh, already in place to check that everything is uh, ready to run Bihat. And this is the test that we have just written, okay? And as you see, it automatically uh, connects to the site, click on some, on some, con on some uh, link and checks that the, the, result, the result page is, uh, has that text that we have declared here. Uh, for the second second story, we can go to the next uh, solution. Okay, so you go to the next solution. We have another file with the solution. And, and as you can see, it's very easy. I am the anonymous user. I go to the home page and I click on B recipe and I should see two strings. Super easy vegetarian pasta bake and wholesome pasta bake is the ultimate comfort food. If you check the site, this is the feature recipe. If I go inside, I can see that the, the strings that I, I have declared on the test. Okay, this is the title and this is the description of the of the recipe. Okay, remember that if you do this, you have to use content created for the test, not uh, real content because it's going to change often. So as you see, the, the first and the second story are very similar. They are, uh, uh, the idea is that you get familiar with Bihat. The third uh, user story is to access a homepage article. This is very similar, okay? I should, the user should be able to see an article on the homepage and access it directly from the homepage. Uh, so this means that going to the home page and is see an article on the home page. Okay, we see an article. We see that there are articles here, so we can test that the user can uh, see this. Uh, the steps are more or less the same. I'm the anonymous user. I go to path. I click on something, and then I should see uh, some text. Okay. Um, Let's see this exercise. Is, is this one is the same as before. We have the first lines of the test 
an article in home page. As a visitor, I want to found a, and see an article in the home page so that I can learn about topics related to recipes. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to the solution directly. Okay, that's uh, US3 solution and As you can see, it's kind of the, it's the similar as before. I'm the anonymous user. I go to the home page. I click on view article. And if you check here, it's like I go to the home page. I click view article. And I will see, I can see the give your oatmeal, the ultimate makeover, and other strings that are what we have declared here. Okay. I use some tags to classify them, I mean, to, 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 to be able to reference the test uh, later if I want just to run, for example, the test related to content on to our, or to articles. Then let's go to for a, some, something, another test that the user should be able to view an article, including tags, related articles, and breadcrumb. This, so, for example, when we, when we go to an article, we should check more features. In this case, not only the, the content or the title, but the breadcrumb or the related, related articles. So, uh, the user should be able to view an article, including tags, related article, and breadcrumb. So, the steps are more or less the same. And the anonymous user, I go to some path and I should see some text. Um, so how we can do this? Well, I'm going directly to the solution of, the, of this exercise. And what we have, it's, as you see, this is the uh, article view feature, article view feature solution. And this is a little bit longer, but as you see, what we could do is I'm an anonymous user. I'm going directly to an article because I want to check the article. And then I check uh, many texts that should be present in my, in my web, web page. Uh, the title, the description, uh, some tags, and, and for example, the breadcrumb is here. As you see, home articles, daily, daily free, and no, sorry, this is the web. Uh, let me check because I'm, I, I'm not sure. Oops. Vegan, vegetarian, what's breakfast? Oops. The, ah, here, the should see tax and vegan chocolate. Okay, those are the tax. Um, so as you see, at the moment, we have done very simple things, just accessing the site and, and checking, um, checking texts. But what are the issues with this user story? Well, one of the th problems is that the, the exact text of the breadcrumb is not clear or, or, or is already present on the page. So what I mean is that here we check for vegan chocolate. And if you check here, probably vegan chocolate is in, in another part of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the page. So it's not clear that you are really testing the breadcrumb, okay? Um, also, for example, uh, I can test that there are related articles, but how I can test that the article itself is not appearing in the related articles? Because if I check for this, uh, for this title, this title could be appear on, on the more feature articles, so I mean there is no direct way to 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 detect that the same article is in, in the in the feature articles. So that's why we're going to to introduce the definition the, to define regions of, of the theme. So you can declare to Pihat the regions of the of your theme and then you can test things on only on, on, a, on a given uh, on a given region okay so for example in this case 
you can you have you, ha you have to go to a certain to a big 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 hat YAML file where you can you configure the 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 big hat and then as you can see there is a property called region map where you can declare the different regions. What you do is just to add a, a, a name for the region that it's uh, for use inside BHAT and then the CSS selector that uh, BHAT will use to detect the region. Okay, so for example, uh, in this case, the content region, it's, uh, it's just uh, uh, the element that has the class region content. This allows to, uh, this allows to, to, yeah, to create uh, steps that are more precise. So if we come back to the user story four, uh, we are going to improve it with uh, more steps. In this case, we are going to use the should see and also the I should not see because we don't we don't want to see the the title of our article in the related articles. So if we go to our code, we go to the next exercise, use 4B. Okay, the file is article view improved. Okay, article view, in, view improved feature. And the exercise is just uh, the, the introduction of the test. So let's see the um, solution. So what we are doing now? We are using more or less the same steps at the beginning. We are the anonymous user. We go to the article, then we check the some text. But in this case, we're using regions. In this case, for example, I, we, we, we say I should see the home in the breadcrumb region. So this is the first component of the breadcrumb. In this case, it's more clear. As you see, we have home articles and and they're dairy free and delicious milk chocolate. If we check the, the site, uh, the, here we have uh, home articles and the, the title. So this way we can be more, much more precise, as you can see. Oh, sorry. And also, uh, we are going to check the content more precisely in the content region and also, we are going to check for the more feature uh, articles, in this case, in the sidebar region. So we can check that we have the, the title. So the more feature articles is here, more feature articles. And also, we can check that we are not going to see the title of the content that we are currently seeing. Uh, we, don't, we don't want that uh, title in the more uh, in the feature articles. So we can use it, the, I should not see uh, certain text in the sidebar region. So this allows you to, um, yeah, to be much more precise when you, when you want to check your, your site. Okay, so let's introduce the, the next uh, functionality of, of Drupal, that is the, using the Drupal API. What we have done until now is just to use to, to query the site and, and do checks on the site. But uh, many times we need to do something more uh, deep or more, more complex on the, on the Drupal. Uh, for example, making changes on the site or creating a user or creating entities or running cron or whatever we need. So what we do in this case is to add in the API tag to the scenario. So in this case, it means that the Drupal API is used by BHAT. This means that the BHAT can run PHP code in the context of a bootstrap Drupal. So you can do anything that you do in your models or code with Drupal, you can do using this, this driver. So you can yeah, create content, run PHP, do anything, anything that you want. The only limitation is that the BHAT needs to be run in the same 
a context of uh, Drupal, so in the same machine or in the same container, of course, because what it does is to bootstrap Drupal and run the code. So to test this, we are going to use, we are going to write this user story five. Uh, this this, um, this story, user story is to uh, access a recipe creating form, okay? In this case, only the author user should be able to access the recipe creating form, of course, no anonymous user, for example, or other kind of user. So in this case, the, the, the steps that we should use are this one. Uh, for example, I'm logged in as a user with the role, uh, in this case, will be editor, of course. Uh, I will go to a certain path uh, because I have, I, I've been, I'm logged in with the, with the user with a role. The next steps are done with that user, okay? So the user go to a certain path and then the user should see something and it should not see something. And you have to use the API uh, tag to the scenario that, uh, that triggers the, the API driver. So let's check this case. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's go to this exercise. This one is recipe edit form access. Recipe, oops. Oh, God. Well, I don't know. Recipe. Uh, edit for access feature. This is the proposed uh, test. As, as before, we have the feature describing the user story and then the, the beginning of the test. In this case, we have the, the tags and I said, and as I said, we have the API tag, okay? If we check the solution, This will be um, the test. And what we have, we have different scenarios in this case. So which is, which is the first scenario? The first scenario is accessing our recipe creation form with an author user. An author user should be able to access that form. So what we do, given I'm logged in as a user with the author role, I go to know the add recipe, and then I should see the create recipe text. And obviously, uh, I, I, should not see, you are not authorized to access this page. And under the hood, Big Hat, what it does is in the first step, when it says, I'm logged in as a user with the author role, it creates a, a temporal user with the author role and it logs the, the, the browser in using the, that user that has been created. Okay, so the next uh, uh, request to the to the Drupal will be with this uh, logged in user. So you can start checking everything with that uh, kind of user. Uh, you, we should check that the author user is able to do what we want, but also we have to check that other users are not able to do that. Uh, well, sorry, in this case, first we are going to check that the administrator user also can do this. So you see it's the same test, but with a different role, okay? And the, the, other, the, other, the other user, like for example, the editor, uh, the editor doesn't write uh, articles, it just checks the, the articles, so the editor user should not be able to add a new recipe. So we got a test for that, a scenario, that we log in as the editor role, and then we go to the node add recipe, and we should see that there is uh, there is that the user is not uh, authorized to to access this page. We do the same for the authenticated user because the authenticated user, yeah. Probably probably you don't need it uh, because if you see the create recipe, for example, here, no. Uh, if you should if you see the create recipe text. You probably are uh, in the edition in the edit form, 
Uh, but in this case, I, I wanted to show the different possibilities, and also it's it's a way to be sure that uh, you are in that place because maybe you have uh, some text that matches uh, what you are looking for. So it's good to test uh, a few things. Uh, keep into account that this is very fast, okay? Because at the end, what is what it's doing is just checking the output of the of the of the web server. So it's very fast. Uh, so as I said, we first check that we have access with the with the proper role, and we check that we don't have access uh, with the the roles that are not authorized. As you see, it's the same, but with different roles. And in this case, you may see a problem: is that we are using the same the same scenario, but with a slightly different uh, change. In this case, for example, we have the same scenarios. But the, the, the only difference is that the role that we are using, that's not very dry, okay? So we are going to uh, introduce something to fix this, okay? That's reusing the test, okay? Because the tests are very repetitive and only some, some parameters change. So how to, we can reuse tests? We can use the scenario outline. And as you can see, what we can do is to uh, use paramet parameters on the on the scenarios. Okay, so as you can see, we have a, an example and an scenario where we have two steps, and those steps uh, can use the the values that are declared here. So we we create an scenario, and then we use uh, some variables that are. Uh, populated with the values of the table that we have uh, below. Okay, so let's see an, an, an example with the, with, this, with the same user story as before, but using a scenario of lines. Okay, let's go to this. Let's see the solution directly. Oops. It's this one. It's Oops. Let's see this one. So it's more or less the same as before, but in this case, for example, the access recipe creation form with an authorized user, we are uh, using it for the administrator role and the author role. It's more or less the same, but the only thing is that here in this step that I'm logging in as a user with the role, role whatever, this variable is a place, but those two values. That means that BHAT under the hood is going to run this uh, scenario two times, but with different values for uh, for each um, for this this variable. So what we achieve is that we don't write the test twice, but we run the test with the with both of the of the roles. So we are sure that uh, it's working for those two roles. We do the same for the. Um, the roles that should not be authorized, okay? We use the, um, the same scheme, use the, the scenario outline, and we use two roles, the authenticate user and the editor use, user. That should not be, they shouldn't be able to edit the, the to access the, the node add recipe URL, okay? Um, okay, let's continue. Let's uh, check how to use a complete browser because what we have been using until now it's the it's just only HTTP request and process the result. But sometimes you need a, a full browser. Uh, with Pihat you you get this using the JavaScript tag. So if you add a, if you add the JavaScript tag to a scenario. Uh, a JavaScript capable engine is used. Uh, usually, is, for example, Chrome with Selenium 2. So uh, it's great because you have a complete browser and you can do uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, many type of checks. 
And for example, this is required if you want to check things like the Sika editor, because Sika editor is based on JavaScript. It uses JavaScript, so you need to have uh, JavaScript uh, available to, um, to test anything on, on the Sika editor, okay? So we are going to test the, the recipe creation. This is going to be harder, of course, because we have uh, many complex, uh, well, many fields that we have to, to fill. Uh, so there are, those are the steps that I suggest. For example, uh, I fill some field with some value. I select some value from a select list. Or, for example, a scroll into a, into a field. This is important because Big Hat uh, checks even the visibility of items. So if you try to access a, 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 an element that it's not visible, Big Hat is going to complain. And this is good because uh, it's important that the user is able to access an element. If, if the element is not accessible, is not visible, the user is not going to, it is not, it's not going, it's not going to be able to to use it, so this, the test should fail. So in this case, uh, because the, the form is, is uh, long enough, we may use the uh, scroll into field. There is another step that it's called a uh, field in, in the rich text editor, because we are going to use the Sika editor. And also we are going to use uh, a media. Uh, it's, it's a complex step, because we have to upload a, an an image, make it available, and select on the on the interface. Okay, so because if we do uh, if, if we do the, the um, assigning a media to the to the form manually with the steps, it, it's going to be very cumbersome. So we have a step that does it for you. So the test is uh, readable for any user. Um, let me show you the. Um, the um, oh sorry the um, the form that we are going to test so if we go here oh let's no way the ul is not correct but i can fix it If we go to add a new content, we are going to, we are testing the recipe, right? Recipe creation. So we are going to test this form. Okay, we have the name, <clears throat> we have a language, preparation time, cooking time, uh, we have text field, we have a select, we have a media field, we have a SIC editor field. Okay. As you see, it's not super complex, but that's something that yeah, it's it's not so, so simple as the beginning. Okay, let's see how we solve this. Oops. Let me go to that um, exercise. This was the six, I think, right? Yeah, six. Let's see the solution directly. So how we can do this? Well, we start with our scenario. Then there is a, a step that it's called given file with name, uh, this uh, long name. Uh, and that and I mean that file, and then the next step is that there is a media entity. As you can see, the media entity at this step, the, to add a media entity, is using the image that we have declared previously. So what we are doing is creating an entity, a media entity, with this file. This is required because we are going to use that media in the in the form. Okay. So what we do, as you can see, the text is. Uh, the test is readable, so what we do is we are using, we are logged in as a user with certain role. Remember, this is a, a, a scenario outline, so we are going to test this with two users, the administrator and the author. 
So we go to the to the recipe creating form, and we start filling the the, the different fields. The for example the recipe name or the preparation name or the number of servings. As you can see, we are using the um, the labels of the of the fields. If you go to the form, as you can see, we are using this label. Why? Because obviously it's, it's more easy for any non-technical user to read the test if, you, if we use these labels. If we use anything more uh, technical, uh, we will break the purpose of, of making the test readable for any, any user. Uh, so, fill the different, the, the different fields, select one element from the, from the select, uh, select box. So, for example, it says medium from difficulty. So, this will do going to difficulty and check, uh, in this case, medium. We, will, we can select easy, medium or hard, whatever. But as you can see, we're using all the, always we're using texts that are available in the, in the page, okay? That it is not, not uh, we, we avoid any technical uh, string. Then we scroll to the direction field. That's because the direction is, uh, it's, oh, where it is? The direction, ah, here, it's down below. So we need to scroll. And this is um, this. Then we use the rich text editor step because it's a SQL editor, and we need a special step to do this. And then we assign the media that we have created before. That means this step. What it's doing is going to the media, clicking here, and selecting one of the images here that we have uh, just uploaded. Okay, and. At the end, we press save and we check the result. We check that the, there is a, a string saying the uh, test recipe because this is the, the title of the recipe that we have just here. Uh, we see that this is a summary because it's what we have just here, okay? And you can see, you, 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 you will see the recipe directions and because we have used it here. Uh, also, for example, uh, something that I forgot to add probably is to add a, to check for a text that says the recipe has been created. I don't remember exactly which is the um, the way that Drupal says, but you can check that kind of test. Okay, that of texts. Um, yeah. The steps. Yeah. The thing is that I, I forgot to show you the steps. If we go to our container and we run the bhat dl command, we can see all the available steps, okay? As you see, there are many of them. Obviously, you'll probably not know them by, I mean, you don't have all of them in your head. But for example, if you want to, I don't know, to something related to cron, you can grip the result and you see that there are different different steps to run cron, Elisa cron, uh, uh, search API, etc. Or if you want to, I don't know, something related to field, you can check that. I um, mean, grip, and you have here all the different steps. As you can see, the steps use some of them use some like rec, uh, rec ex, rec ex, uh, expressions uh, because. Mm, the steps are kind of flexible, so you can write the test in a way that it's readable for users. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to know which steps are available, just run this command and you will see a lot of steps that you can use in your, in your tests. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, go on, please. Uh, maybe, should we use the... The microphone, yeah. the microphone, sorry, can you go to the microphone? I'm just, oh, oh, if, you, oh, if you want, you can ask me. If it's not too long, I can repeat yeah, on the... Um, when you create, um, just, uh, yes. Uh, usually, the, the, all the steps that create content, 
that are a step already created, I mean, steps that are provided by the different BHAT contents that are um, available, usually they delete the content, okay? If you create the content manually, for example, going to the, for example, in this case, the media is created by BHAT, so it's going to be deleted, but the content that we have created using the form, because you have created by the, using the regular, the standard form, BHAT, let's say, is not, uh, the, he, he doesn't know about the content, that content, so it's not deleted. So that's why you shouldn't run this test in an environment that uh, should be uh, not polluted. At the end, the, the, the environment can be polluted, okay? So let's go to the next functionality that is creating custom steps. As you can see, we have a lot of steps, but uh, sometimes you need to add a specific step for a project to simplify repetitive actions or, for example, to maintain the readability of the tests. Uh, for, example, oops, sorry. for example, in this case, uh, we want to add a new, new, new step. For that, what we are going to do is going to a file that is called feature context that you can find inside the, the code base. And what you do is to create a, a, just a function, okay? We are going to see it. And um, here you declare the, the, the step, the text that it's related to the function, okay? So when we had encountered something like this, uh, I do something with an argument. Uh, had calls this function, okay, with the argument as the first parameter. Uh, had uses mink to, to use the browser. You may know mink because it's, it's uh, in core, in Drupal core. It's used by the, by the web, uh, web, web test class to handle the, um, the browser, but it's, it's something that they have borrowed from, from Bihat. Um, so if, if you and if you use the API tag, you can inside that function you can use any any function of the Drupal core or any function of your Drupal modules or whatever you it's available to Drupal, and you can uh, obviously you use uh, a PHP to to run this. Um, so, for example, in this case we're using to, we are we are going to create a custom step that is. Uh, when I go to recipe list, why? Because we want to keep the, 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 the test very clear. So for this, what you have to do is to go to test functional, we have to start feature context and add your new step there. So for example, what we are going to do is, well, let me show you, we are going to the Oh, sorry, solution seven, uh, solution. Oops. Ah, yeah, of course. This functional behind a ah, bootstrap, yes. Here is the, the feature context. Here is where you can declare your own uh, steps for your uh, project because if you have uh, different projects, um, uh, I mean, if you want to. Re reuse a step for different projects. You should use a PHAT uh, context, but in this case, we are just using um, adding a new a new step. And this is the the step. I go to recipe list. Okay, the the test text is very easy. I go to the recipe list, and when we had uh, encounters this, it will run this. As you can see here, we are using a code. Uh, this is uh, some function provided by Mink. In this case, we go to the home page, we get the session, we get the page, and inside the page, we find a region. Then we have an object. 
if we don't have if we don't find the object we don't we didn't find the the region so we throw an exception if we have the re the region we uh, look for a, a link that is called recipes because we want to go to a recipes a page and we click on that recipe so with this with this code we have created our custom custom step uh, then, and we can use it on our test. If I go to see the to see the available steps, now it's here. Okay, so I can use it in my test. For example, if I want to check something about the recipe list, instead of uh, adding, I go to I, check, I, I click on recipe and and go to that page. We, I can just use this this one single step to make my my tests uh, short and readable. Okay. And that's all for the exercises. Uh, I would like to add some references. Uh, here you have the B the BHAT official documentation. It's uh, very interesting. You have uh, more, more, a lot of information there. Uh, also, in this uh, setup, I have used two set of contexts. One is uh, from Nuvales. It's a, um, a Drupal company that uh, provides uh, BHAT context for to use. Also, uh, that means a lot of steps that you can use. And also uh, our own BHAT context from Metadrop, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an extension of Nuvale. So the, some things that they don't provide, we provide o o on top of that. So using these two contexts, you will have a lot of uh, steps that makes, will make the, your test much easier to create, okay? And also, uh, this is the Drupal boilerplate. It's a tool that we have created. It's based on Woodby. It has uh, containers with all, all required for running Drupal. And it's nice because it, it's, uh, I mean, you can just uh, run a command and you will have a local environment with Docker and BHAT pre-configured uh, as long as, um, I mean, uh, along with other tools like Backstop.js. But the, the most important thing is that you will have BHAT ready to, to play with it because, as I said before, BHAT sometimes is hard to configure. So at the beginning, it can be a little bit uh, frustrating. But using this, you just run a command and you will have uh, uh, BHAT uh, ready to run. Okay. So that's all. Uh, do you have a question? Mike's there. It should oh. be. It, it, ah, go. okay. Hello. Um, in your uh, scenarios, uh, you used uh, way more annotations uh, beside from API. Yeah. Um, what does the other uh, annotations mean? Because uh, in the first scenarios, we got no annotations, and then there was the jump with a lot of annotations. <laughs> yeah, the, those annotations are, you mean this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th those are the tags. So the scenarios are tagged with those values. So there are some tags that are just simple tags that they have no meaning. It's a way to uh, test, I mean, to reference them. And what I mean with reference is that if I go, if I run BHAT, BHAT is going to run all tests. But I can say, okay, I only want uh, the, for example, the, um, uh, where the con I think there is a content one, content. So now BHAT will run the content, but the, uh, the only the content uh, scenarios. I think that there is no content. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, sorry. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Uh, so some tags are just for tagging and other it's, it's tags just, have just for some tagging. background like the exactly. API one. Exactly. And so there are some that they have it's just attacks, but the others, for example, the API or JavaScript, they, uh, they are uh, obviously you, you can run only the JavaScript, for example, test, but it also has, has a meaning that it's in the case of JavaScript is using a real browser. Or in the API is just to have the the Drupal API available. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, 
Hi. Can you talk a little bit about like uh, you already have a, a project and then uh, about sorry to, what you already have a, a project and then you want to integrate this in the, in an existing project? Mm -hmm. How how would you do it? How you set well, up it? You, you should be able to do this because uh, at the end you don't need to change your site at all. Uh, at most you have well you have to require some um, composer uh, packages. But uh, the functionality of your site should be the same and maybe uh, add in the feature context but it's a class that is it's only used during the text the tests so your site is totally untouched it's the same so uh, it depends on, on, on the case but I will uh, prepare Biha to be run and then start covering the site with tests uh, so you you have to add the composer dependency for Behat and then yeah to in, to install uh, Behat you have to you have to require Behat itself and and the configuration of Behat um, is here let me oh. here we have uh, the Behat YAML it's a a YAML where you configure a lot of things. As I said, it can be hard to configure, so mm -hmm. I, that's why I recommend that boilerplate. And here, you, for example, you declare, uh, well, Behat has suites. You can have like different set of tests. Here are all the contexts that we are using and the configuration of those contexts. For example, there is a context related to responsive that allows you to test the things in different uh, resolution or, or screens. Um, or for example, there is a, a debug context that if there is a, an error, you can get a screenshot. So that's very handy because you see an error in your CI and sometimes it's what has happened. And it's nice because you can check the, the screenshot and, and you can see exactly what happened. Um, extension, I mean, as you see, it can be, it can be a little bit complex. Uh, that's why I recommend to start with something that it's pre-configured. Uh, but what you have to do is just, uh, I mean, if you want to add BHAD, you will have to require BHAD on uh, PHP, I'm sorry, in, in Composer, add this BHAD YAML and the feature context that it's, uh, well, you can start with an empty one. And uh, finally, uh, does BHAD has any kind of a report generator yeah. Uh, generation? Yeah, uh, yeah, if I run BHAD, it starts to run the tests, and in this case, as you, uh, at, at the end, you, say, you see that it says that it has run two scenarios and four steps, and everything is okay. If it fails, it will, uh, I think it, it returns a, an error on the command, and uh, you can export the results in, in, a, in a format that CI can understand. So if it, something fails, the CI can, can detect the problem. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, great uh, workshop. Thank you. Any other question? Um, what is your strategy with content when testing content? Like um, in the workshop, you took the yeah. umami, but in a real project, do you just dump all the content and then start and no we, we, we don't do that because uh, for two reasons one is because of the content is uh, not stable so it, it may change at, uh, at any point without uh, any notification and also because we have some projects that they have a huge database so it will be not practical to I don't know uh, import 10 gigabytes of data uh, you can do some tricks like uh, removing some tables or do that kind of things but at the end it's it's not it's not ideal. It's, it's, uh, we will have problems at some point. So what we do, and it works for us, it works very well, and we use this also in the local environment. We uh, have a command that uh, spin up the, the, the site from a local configuration. So it creates an empty site, but everything is config configured because we use the, the configuration system of Drupal. And then usually you use the default content module that when you enable that model, it automatically automatically creates a set of content. So what we have is a, a brand new site with just the content that we need to test um, the functionalities. This is very fast. It's very stable because there are no changes. 
and really it's if you for example have problems because there are some tests that fails or there, there's some situation that it's failing because of the content for example you have a I don't know long test or whatever you can just add a new content and the full content with that uh, with that uh, that kind of content so you can test that situation and that works very well very well for us yeah please so I have a few questions. Uh, first is, I was a little bit confused how this uh, so, media... So, so, uh, yeah. yeah, can you talk a little bit uh, lower? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, I was a little bit confused how this uh, media entity has been created. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more about that, where we can find some documentation, uh, how the syntax mm -hmm. looks like for that, because it was a little bit confusing. Uh, okay, the, the, the media step is the, the most tricky one, okay, it's, it's, um, it's the most complex because you have to create the, the media under the hood and then select it. What we are doing is, uh, if we check the, the steps, uh, I have it here, no. let me go there, tests, functional, we had Features, umami, okay. Uh, it was mm, the media one was the creation of the recipe. That's riff recipe create. I think it's this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We use several steps. The first step is given fillet with name, whatever. This under the hood creates um, uh, a file for Drupal. Okay, then in, this, in the next step, we, we, we create a media entity using the Drupal API. Here we are not using the, the, edit, the uh, edit form. We are creating the, 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 media, the, the entity directly using the Drupal API. And what we do is referencing this, this file that we have declared before, okay? So at this point, we have already a media uploaded to our site and it, it will be available on the uh, Drupal interface. And then we have the, this, this step that it's called I assign the media with the name blah, blah, blah to that field. Uh, internally, what it does, this step, is to go to the, really, what you will do as a user. It goes, it looks for this button, it clicks it, and then looks for the, um, for the media that it should be available in this list, click it, for example, this one, insert select, and now it's ready. That's why, for example, in this case, you need to use a complete browser because obviously with, with good, we do won't be able to do this. Um, so that's why I recommend to use the, the, the context that I, I, I mentioned before, because those contexts provide the, that kind of steps that are very complex. Because the BHAT extension, that it is the Drupal module that it's contributed, it's, I mean, it's good, it's, it's a very good uh, uh, module, but it lacks a lot of steps because at the end you, there are so many things that you can do with Drupal that obviously they can't cover everything. So it's described in this context on how the property should be created. If I describe those contexts, like uh, what I'm they do, still, I'm still not 100% sure how I would be able to find the to use them. Gui guidance, uh, how, how I can use that property, which property I can pass, and so on. How you can use them? You mean, or because sorry, I, I don't hear you well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm still not sure how to use that. I mean, I understand what happened under the hood but I'm not sure where I can find the guidance and the documentation or the files, uh, which properties can I use, in which syntax and so on. The, how, the, the, how, the, how, how to use the, the context in the syntax or... or so, I mean, because, I, I, because they are talking in the, in the other session and I, 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 I'm hearing like the, the voice. Fine. We, 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 can, we can speak, speak up. But if, if, uh, anyway, I think it, it's late. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going but to, if, to if, take much time. Uh, after the session, I can, yeah, I will. we can talk. Uh, and, sure. okay. I have just one more question. Uh, do you have any like uh, pre-baked uh, Docker images that will allow us to uh, run BHAT tests with Drupal in CI-CD. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you have some uh, good examples? Of, of How to use uh, BHAT with CI? I mean, uh, I'm, 
I'm strictly looking for, for useful images. Do, do you have something what you can recommend? Um, I mean, we, we use BigHat in our CI with, uh, with the containers provided by this boilerplate. So okay. we, we bring up the containers and run the tests. Okay. And it, it, it works pretty well. With all, I mean, we have a Chrome container, a Chrome Selenium Hub, and some other uh, setup. But uh, it works pretty well. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it. I mean, it's it's super late. I'm I'm sorry. Well, you, you do have. I mean, it's two course plus. So, I mean, ah, okay. It's, yeah, ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. I was going a little bit faster. Okay, so we may have uh, more time. I, I, I think. I, I mean, it's super long. <laughs> okay. So I was wondering if uh, there is like a, a way to execute some things right before the running the the yeah. behat. <coughs> That's a good question because there are um, there is a way to to uh, execute steps before each scenario. Uh, it's uh, called scenario background. I didn't add to the to the workshop because I mean it was already too too mm -hmm. long. But you can declare steps that are run uh, before each scenario inside mm -hmm. a feature. If you remember that there were some features that had several mm -hmm. scenarios, so you can. Like prepare the HS scenario. Yeah. No, I, I meant like uh, at the beginning before running any scenario and in the end. Like hooks, for example. Like if, if there is, uh, a, a, for example, yeah. a, before any scenario. Yeah, I, I was thinking that maybe yeah, could be nice to like, for example, do a, a site install and import some configuration and then use that to, to run the different scenarios with a, a I mean, initial point. Already I mean, for example, uh, install a site with a certain configuration. You can do that, but you shouldn't do it with BigHat because at the end, BigHat just is testing a site that it's already prepared. In our case, what we do is uh, we create, I mean, we spin up the site and create the site and prepare the site, and then we call BigHat. That kind of big configuration you should do in before BigHat. What you can do, BigHat has uh, some hooks, so you can run some PHP code, for example, uh, before any step or before, before and after any step or scenario or feature. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, one of the things that we do is uh, disable or, or, or touching the, the cookie banner because in, in a site with the cookie banner, it's very annoying that you have to click every time that you are running a test. So instead of polluting your... your, your um, test with the action to click that banner, we do uh, before each scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hi. Thanks for sharing this one. Thank you. Uh, basically, uh, in, in my previous project, I'm using this particular Bree head and for example... Bree You are yeah, using Bree yeah. Okay. So we have like thousands of uh, the test cases already written. And we are using the Chrome driver yes. to running this test. Okay. Uh -huh. And we continuously sometimes like uh, uh, when we have like long running test, uh -huh. and then it will be timed out every time and we did not find any solution for this. Do you mean um, it's a timeout when you access a page or a timeout when you are running the test Mostly for I don't know, four hours or something like that? Yeah, for long, long running tests. Um, we don't have the problem, maybe because our test, uh, they take at most mm, uh, one hour and half, maybe or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that sometimes we have some issues on the sysadmin part, let's say, so we have, we have to deal with the containers. But uh, um, so far we have always have uh, found a solution. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's true that we don't have a uh, test running for hours or something like that. Okay. So I'm sorry, I okay, can't no help you. Okay, the last question, like, can we also integrate the J unit in this particular B head? What thing? Integrate the J, what? J unit for making the, the HTML report? PHP unit? No, no, J no. unit. J unit? Yeah. What's it is a kind of ah, ah yeah yeah I yeah. ah, see sorry yeah yeah hot <laughs> unit I mean I, I don't uh, say that in English so I, I I'm not used to the pronunciation okay. uh, I think that it can uh, export it as uh, uh, at, with that format uh, mm -hmm. but I don't really remember uh, let me check yeah because maybe there is something here related to that. Uh, 
the outs. Maybe uh, the format. I think format J unit. Ah, here yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Okay. I mean, we, we, I don't remember exactly which format we use, but we we uh, uh, it's integrated in our CI and and the CI it's uh, aware yeah. of of the tests. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. No questions. Okay, thank you very much for coming and for stay all the workshop. Uh, if uh, the workshop is prepared to do the exercises, that that was the original idea. So if you want, if you, if you like it, I I encourage you to um, clone the repository and do the exercises uh, at home uh, because I think it's very. Uh, I mean, you will uh, really be familiar with with Bihat. It starts very simple and it gets complex at the end. Okay, so thank you.